Hi everybody, welcome back. So before we get to the painting today, I wanted to go ahead and do um, the drawing for October. So today is November 2nd and we are gonna go ahead and do the drawing. So I only had I only have six entries. Um, I had six people that helped sponsor my channel and I greatly appreciate that. So I've got the names in a little bowl here. And so I'm gonna close my eyes and keep mixing them up. And I'm just gonna grab that one. All right, and the winner is, if I can get it open. Wow, really? E. Engel. So uh, the winner for October's drawing is E. Engel. I wanna thank you very, very much for your support. Um, I will reach out to you via email and you've got your um, Mandalay Owl and I'm gonna finish the back for you and then you're gonna get this coffee mug. The lore is near to all who call out to him. So I will be getting those in the mail to you next week. Um, again, I wanna thank everybody who supported and um, for the month of November, I have a larger painting that we are going to be doing a drawing for. So let's go ahead and get to our painting again. Thank you very much for your support. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. So uh, just like the painting Praise and the painting Living Water, um, I have had um, spiritual warfare in my mind for a while. And so that is what I'm going to attempt to paint today. This is a painting that we are painting over it did crack significantly but I like the texture that it left that we can use as the base for this painting so um the other one cracked because I was just using the house paint with water and it, the pigments just didn't support it so today we are going back to our thicker artist loft or not artist loft uh, deco art paint um so we've got the deco art if I can grab it We've got the uh, Deco Art Americana Snow Titanium White is our white. Oh, here's the bottle that I use. And then um, we have the Deco Art Americana. Grab all my stuff. The Deco Art Americana Lep Lamp Ebony Black is our black. They are mixed with water. Um, so I've gotten to the point now where I just kind of put my paint in as much as I need to cover the canvas. And then I slowly add water until I get to the consistency that I need. So I will put the paint colors down in the description. Um, and then it, it's kind of up to you how you like your consistency on your, your um, uh, Dutch pours. Um, so this is kind of about this consistency. It's a little bit uh, thinner than a three to one ratio. The paint does fall straight through, but it um, and has a good stream off of the spatula. So that's kind of what my white looks like. And then the other colors that we have, we've got the Deco Art Americana uh, Copper, and we added a little bit of the Fluid Acrylics Magenta to it to give it that deep, um, that deep red color. We've got also Media Fluid Acrylics Pyrrole Red, uh, Deco Art Extreme Sheen Sky Blue Topaz, uh, Dazzling Metallics Ice Blue. And then we have one more color. It is our Metallics uh, Teal. That was our other color. So we are going to be doing a, as you can see, the split in the paint. Flood one side with black, one side with uh, white, and then we're going to put everything in the middle and kind of push it all together and uh, see what we get. All right, I'm going to get my music turned on. We'll go ahead and get started.
Right, everybody we are gonna go ahead and stop here I'm gonna stop messing with it um I brought my husband in to take a look and we both agree it's not so much spiritual warfare but holy warfare definitely fits so um I I am still kind of on the fence about it I like it but it's not exactly what I had in mind but that's okay um, I do like how all of this is just nice and flowy and all that and it's just slamming into the dark and um, 
We've got all the gold, which represents heaven out here, just in the depths fighting and, and all of that. So we are going to leave it just like this. I'm going to get some macro shots of it because it will make great prints. And uh, we are going to leave it here and see how it dries. And then when we will come back, we will um, put our vinyl on it. Or not our vinyl. We're definitely not vinyling this one. Um, we will put our coat of resin on it and seal it all up. So. Hi everybody, welcome back. So I am excited. Um, we are going with the name Spiritual Warfare on this one and it did dry um, really well. The cool thing about how this dried is the white um, dried nice and smooth and everything, but there's cracks in the black. And in those cracks, you can see turquoise and some golds and some of the lighter colors. So the colors of heaven coming through um, so we're really excited about the way this one dried. Um, want to get the uh, resin on it to really bring out the, the colors and the detail. So because um, this is a larger canvas, we are putting the, um, these underneath it to help support the canvas so it doesn't droop. So I have, uh, this is six, six by six tiles and then a couple of uh, popsicle sticks. It ends up being the perfect height with my um, the pins that I put underneath it that we don't have any dip in the canvas. So I had to take my glove off. I had resin on it, so I got to put my glove back on. And then we are going to get our resin mixed up. Um, I actually just got done resining Glorious Praise about two hours ago. And so I was able to, that one was cured enough, I was able to get it to move. And now I can get this one done. So I already have some resin on my plastic. All right. So our resin is our Envirotex Light uh, High Gloss Pour On. It is a one-to-one -one ratio. It is by volume, not by weight. That is extremely important to remember. Um, because I want to say it's the hardener that weighs more than the resin does. So if you try and do it by weight, then you are not going to get a good mixture. And it is not going to cure correctly. So always remember um, this resin is by volume or yeah, by volume, not by weight. So with this size canvas, we are going to go to this line right here on both cups. All right. I've had a couple of people ask about the gloves that I wear. Um, this is what the box look lo looks like. These are the Glove Plus um, Black Nitrile Latex Free. Um, they are chemical resistant, so you can use them for solvents, uh, lacquers, uh, grease, brake cleaner, all kinds of, of stuff, uh, paint thinner, everything. So they fit really, really well. I have small hands, so small fit my hands perfectly. Um, but these are my go-to gloves. I'll put the link down in the description. Um, again, I get them on Amazon. All right. This is a silicone stir stick. Again, I got on Amazon. I'll put the link down in the description. It is perfect for mixing resin with. It is very, very sturdy and hard, so you can really get a good mixture, but it has a good flat end, so you can move a lot of resin. We are going to be using the two-cup method, so we are going to pour... 
I always start with putting the um, resin into the hardener. First, that's just the way that I do it. I always pour the resin into the hardener first. Make sure you get everything out of the cup, scrape the sides and the bottom. And you're gonna start mixing. Now, if you can see that, hopefully you can, you'll see all that stringy and all that kind of stuff in there. That is the telltale sign that your resin, of course, is not mixed up. We just poured it together. And so our goal is to make it perfectly clear with no strings. As you start to mix it up, it is gonna go cloudy. And that's okay, that's as everything starts mixing together, it is going to get cloudy. Um, when I do it, always scrape the side, scrape the bottom of the cup, and instead of going in a circle, I actually do an under, um, an over under motion, and really pull that bottom resin up to the top to make sure that you get a good mix. And so we're gonna work on it for a couple of minutes. All right, now that it is nice and clear, we are gonna go ahead and uh, start resining. When I resin, I work from the outside in, paying attention to make sure I have a good layer on the edges. If you try and work from the middle and push the resin out, the resin is going to thin out and it, there's a good chance it's gonna pull away from your edges. Now, one thing I did forget to do is make sure that my canvas is perfectly clean. So I just have a little brush over here that I'm going to brush off and make sure there's no hairs or anything like that on it. All right. All right, again, I'm going to work from the outside in. That's going to make sure that we get a good coating on our edges. All right, once I get a good coating on the top, I'm just gonna dip my hand in the resin and I'm gonna run it along the edge. We don't want a thick coat along the edge. We just want a nice thin coat just to make sure that the canvas is protected and sealed. And you'll be able to feel it as you run your hand over the canvas if it's covered. I do not torch immediately after putting resin on. I'm giving those bubbles time to come all the way to the surface. You can actually wait about 10 or so minutes before you torch. 
and that gives all those bubbles a chance to rise to the surface and you don't have to torch as much to get to them. Once you get done with your sides, get down level with the canvas so you can kind of look over it. By looking at it at this angle, you're going to be able to see any divots. Like right here, I have a big divot. You'll be able to see any divots that you need to fill in. It's also going to give you an idea if there's anything in your canvas because you're going to be able to see it. It's always important to get level with your canvas and make sure it looks like glass. All right. And I'm just going to use any excess around the edges again. Make sure they're nice and covered. And then I always scrape the cup. I just drop it right in the center. Resin is self-leveling. Take your time with resin. Um, this resin, you have about a 20 to 30 minute working time. Once it heats up, it starts getting warm. That's because the chemical reaction is starting to happen and it's starting to cure. When that happens, you don't have very much time left, probably about five, 10 minutes. But take your time doing resin. Don't try and speed through it. And then always make sure that you have about an hour's time to monitor it after you're done with it for any bubbles that might pop up and anything that might fall in it to get it out. All right, now that we've got that done, we are going to hit it with the blowtorch. This is going to do two things. It's going to pop the bubbles and it's also going to make the resin heat up a little bit, make it a little bit softer, and that's where it's going to self-level. Once you torch it, get down again, level with it. Give it one more good look over. Make sure that everything is level. I have another divot here that came up. Fill that in. Now we are going to blow torch that section. All right. I will check on this about every 10 minutes, 15 minutes for the next hour. At that time, it's going to be pretty much cured to the point that um, I don't have to monitor it. The last thing I'm going to do before we put our cover on is I have just this little master's touch scraper and I'm going to, I hold it this way and I'm just going to run it across the base of the canvas for any drips that have might, might have happened. There shouldn't be very many because we didn't put a thick layer on the sides. If it does dry with drips, just sand them off. That's what I do. All 
All right. That is it for that piece. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cover on. I got this big canvas at the uh, thrift store. I want to say it was the uh, hospice thrift store. The original intent was to paint over it, but it has um, become my cover. So I just put some uh, just paint jars on the sides and then I just take the cover and I lay it directly on top. And that gives me a perfect cover. I've got about an inch clearance between the two and that's going to make it to where no hairs are going to fall in it. No bugs are going to fall in it. It's going to be perfectly um, protected and should dry perfectly smooth. All right, that is it for right now. I will see you when it's all dried. Hi everybody, welcome back. So the painting is all dried and uh, the resin is fully cured. I will probably end up putting a second coat of resin on this before I put it to my website for sale. Um, but that's it. So thank you very much for watching. Down in the description, all of the paint colors you use as well as the mixture ratios and anything that you need to help recreate this painting. Um, also down in the description, links to my Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, as well as my website, guidedbyfaithdesigns.net. There's also a link down in the description if you'd like to help sponsor my channel. Um, I want to thank you for everybody who has helped sponsor my channel. That helps me um, get more materials and all that kind of stuff so I can continue to bring you videos. Um, congratulations again to Miss Engel who won the October drawing. And for the month of November, um, this is the painting that we are going to have up for the drawing. It is a 14 by 18 uh, canvas. It has it is Well With My Soul vinyl. This was a flip cut pour and it has been sealed in polycrylic. So um, I will finish the backs and everything. So go check that out. Um, you will also get a coffee mug of my choice to go along with your painting. So again, thank you very, very much for watching. I hope everybody has a wonderful and blessed day. And as always, God bless.